Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're looking at my first ever graphics card. This is a GTX 660. Let's see how this 2012 card does in 2020 with some modern games. And as we get started here, just a note, if you wanna see other specific cards covered on some of these more modern titles, or if you have other suggestions for modern titles to throw into the benchmarks, let, let me know your thoughts on those down below in those comments, because I really do enjoy taking a look at some of these retro cards on more modern titles to see just how far you can push these cards before you really have to replace them. So the GTX 660, obviously here in 2020, it's pretty long in the tooth, it's pretty dated. Uh, it does predate the current generation consoles, so this thing has been around since the PS3 era and the Xbox 360 era of gaming. Now, obviously, it came at the very tail end of those console lifespans, but still, it's been around longer than the current generation consoles. It has two gigabytes of video memory, which in modern games does start to come into play a lot more than it did back in 2012, 2013, 2014. And it's based on the 28 nanometer Kepler architecture here. Uh, I was uh, The node was, by the way, I believe TSMC, 28 nanometer node but this is a Kepler architecture card. And yeah, it came out at about $229 USD when it was first launched. Now I picked up this card back in 2013, early 2013, and I think I got this thing for about $220, maybe $200, but I think it was also bundled with a game if I recall correctly. So it was a little bit of a good deal because I was just getting into PC gaming. So the free game was actually a nice little add-on uh, for actually purchasing this card. Now the card itself used to be a blower style card but then I replaced it with this uh, EVGA cooler it has two fans on it now just to keep it cooler uh, that was replaced long after I had stopped using this as my daily driver anyways and now it just basically sits on my pegboard over here as a reminder of the graphics cards that I used to have and uh, as also a good reminder that the GTX 1080 Ti is an awesome card. But regardless enough about the card itself, I do wanna mention the test bench setup here. Normally I would throw a Ryzen 3900X or something like that on the test bench, but because the CPU I'm using has not got a bottleneck anything, I'm actually using the Ryzen 3100 overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. We're running DDR4 memory, 16 gigabytes of it at 3200 megahertz, and games are running off of an SSD. So with that little intro out of the way, let's go ahead and look at how this card in 2020 still performs. So like normal, we're gonna start off with Fortnite running on the low preset at 1080p. Now I was actually very pleasantly surprised with this title, not only to see the average FPS there at 119, but also the 1% low is quite high at 83. And then of course the 0.1% low is down there at 46. But basically this was giving us a pretty smooth experience in running this game. It was definitely a game you could run on the GTX 660 and have a good time and basically forget that you're running on an old graphics card that at this point is quite outdated here in 2020 you can definitely get away with running this GPU with Fortnite and still have a very good experience playing this game. And then I ran into Metro Exodus on the low preset for the benchmark here, and this was not a good experience. Now there were times in the benchmark where we were above 30 FPS, but in outdoor scenes specifically through the running of the built-in benchmark, the frame rate dipped really, really low and stayed there. It was basically a slideshow at that point, which resulted in low 1% and 0.1% lows and to be clear about this it's not that we were getting inconsistent frame times it's just that they were really bad frame times so the frame rate was just low and it's not a playable experience even though the average fps is looking like it's getting close to 30 because of those areas of the world where uh, it's dipping way below 30 it's just not playable Dropping down to 720p didn't really help us out in this title either, where the average frame rate did go up just a little bit. There was still a lot of dropping of frames well into the sort of mid-teens and lower teens in outdoor scenes. And it's just not a playable experience and it doesn't really matter what resolution you're running Metro Exodus on. Metro Exodus in the GTX 660 is off the table. Now onto Borderlands 3 on the low preset, and I was actually very pleasantly surprised at 1080p to see that this was a playable experience, at least in the vast majority of scenes throughout the built-in benchmark. Now, I will say that the frame rate did definitely dip below 30 from time to time, but a 0.1% low of 24 and a 1% low of 30 tells me that the frame rate overall is at least hitting that 30 mark. Now, if you're somebody that really insists on higher frame rates while playing games, this is not gonna be a playable experience. 
experience, but if you're coming from consoles over to PCs, then this is probably gonna be fine for you because you've been playing on 30 FPS for a long time, or at least in a lot of titles, not necessarily every title, sure, but you are used to playing at 30 FPS, and if that's the case, then this is absolutely playable. But if you insist on higher frames and you drop down to 720p, we do see a nice boost here in Borderlands 3, seeing an average FPS of 61 at 720p. Definitely doesn't look as good though, running this game at 720p. There's a lot of eye candy added to just upping the resolution at 1080p, which is the way that I would actually probably prefer to play this game after seeing both. But if you are okay with 720p and you do want those higher frames and you just don't want to invest in a better graphics card, this is doable. And finally, we moved to Red Dead Redemption 2, and there was no point even running this game at 1080p because at 720p, it was absolutely not a playable experience. We saw an average FPS of 27, a 1% low of 13, and a 0.1% low of 12. And this was just kind of a stuttery mess, uh, at least when those frame times were a little bit higher than they should have been for a playable experience. And again, it wasn't so much that we were seeing inconsistent frame times with this card. It's just that they were bad frame times. So we were seeing very low frames per second, pretty much through the duration of the test. So even though, again, that average is near 30, it's not a playable experience. So I guess it is conclusion time. The GTX 660, uh, probably not a good pickup right now for any kind of uh, used computer that you're putting together. It's just really a dated architecture at this point. And yes, you can get away with uh, some gaming, obviously, especially if you're looking at esports titles. If the price is right, I guess it wouldn't be a terrible pickup. But frankly, there's other cards that are not much more than something like a GTX 660 on the used market. They give you way better performance than a GTX 660 will. So it basically comes down to if you're building anything new or even new to you then the 660 is just not for you there's just better used options out there however the people that are still using a 660 because maybe you built a computer back uh, in 2012 2013 2014 and you picked up a 660 if you're still happy running the games that you play most on the 660 then yeah there's no reason to upgrade it still can perform especially with those esports style games it can actually perform pretty well in those it's just if you want to play any sort of modern trip AAA titles, um, you're going to be kind of hit or miss whether it's going to even be able to play them at playable frame rates to begin with. And even with Borderlands 3, where we saw that it was definitely playable, even at 1080p, the frame rate is getting pretty dangerously close to 30 FPS. So again, if you're building anything new, avoid the 660. If you're still rocking it, depending on what games you play, you may still have a little bit of life left uh, in this 660 to get out of it before you actually eventually, you know, you're gonna eventually have to upgrade. But that was a look back at the GTX 660 and how it does here in 2020. If there are other graphics cards, especially retro cards that you would like to see me take a look at on this channel, let me know in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.